Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Today I'm here with this Lynn drum. I had repaired a few issues on it for a customer and sent it back home to him in good working order. But when it finished making its 3,000 mile trip and got to him, it was broken. Like, won't even boot broken. I turn it on and there's no beep. Seemingly random characters on the display and it's completely unresponsive. So he sent it back here and we're going to have a look at it. The first thing I'd suspect when something stops working after being shipped is that a connector came apart or came loose. Everything looks okay, but I'm going to double check and make sure that all of these connectors are firmly seated. I'm also going to check any socketed IC chips to make sure that none of them came loose during shipment, although that's extremely unlikely. With the Lin drum, most of the chips are actually soldered to the boards, except for the ROMs, which couldn't be responsible for the problem that we're seeing. So all the connectors were okay, and the chips were, were seated, so that wasn't our issue. It still doesn't turn on. The next thing that I'm going to check are the power rails. The Lin drum has a plus and minus 15 volt supply, as well as a 5 volt supply for the CPU. And then additionally, it has a 5 volt memory rail for the battery backup. We can measure the power rails here on this connector. The ground is pin 6, and we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we can check the other one. So there's our 15 volts at 15.19. There's our minus 15, minus 15.16. There's our 5 volt memory at 4.044, which is fine. It should be about one diode drop less than 5 volts. And then our 5 volt supply is sitting there at 5.226, which is fine. So power supply looks okay. So with the connectors seemingly okay and the power rails all present and accounted for, the next thing I'm going to look at is the CPU chip, which is located right down here. I want to see if the CPU has power and is alive and running. Here's the schematic around the area of the CPU. It's a Z80 processor and the first thing we're going to check is to see if it's getting power if the reset line is normal, and if the clock that drives the CPU is running. For power, we're going to check the VCC pin for 5 volts. That's pin 11. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. And that is 5 volts. I'm using an oscilloscope for this, but you could just as easily use a multimeter. We're also going to verify the ground at pin 29. So there's 22, 4, 6, 8, 29, and that's good. The next line we're going to look at is the clock. And when we talk about the clock in this context, we're not talking about something that keeps track of the time. The clock is a periodic signal that tells the CPU when to execute its next instruction. The clock on my computer CPU is something like 3.6 gigahertz. The clock on the Lin drum CPU here is only 2 megahertz. Unlike modern microcontrollers that have programmable clocks built into them, this Z80 requires that you feed in a clock signal on pin 6. Let's check that out. We've got 2, 4, 6, and hello. We are sitting at 5 volts with no movement, so we have no clock input to the CPU. So let's have a closer look at the clock circuit schematic. So there's a 4 MHz crystal, which combined with the passives and this 7404 inverter gates should put a 4 MHz square wave going into the clock pin of the 7474 chip, which is a flip-flop. Every time the clock transitions from low to high on the flip-flop, its state will change. So basically the flip-flop divides the 4 MHz clock to a 2 MHz clock, which then goes to the CPU or rather should go to the CPU, but right now we have nothing there. So let's look at the clock input to the flip-flop. So that's pin 3 of this U8 chip, and we have nothing. So no 4 megahertz square wave. So problem probably isn't here, so let's move on back. And let's poke around on these inverter gates and see if we have any activity there. So actually if we poke on the crystal itself, we'll be looking at the inputs and outputs of these inverter gates and there's there's no movement there so we've narrowed it down now to this inverter IC chip and the passive components here around the inverter so 
since in theory passives don't fail very often, it should be the inverter chip that's bad, right? But let's think about it. So the Lindrum left here working fine, and the next time it got powered on, this area of the circuitry doesn't work. What, what could have happened to this IC chip when it was in transit and powered off? So I don't think the problem is the IC chip, but rather the crystal. So this little part here is the crystal, and while it doesn't look much like a crystal, it, there really is a thin precision cut piece of quartz crystal inside that little can. And when power is applied to it, it vibrates at a precise frequency, which is marked here on the can, 4.000 in megahertz. You can build a circuit around it, like the one here with the inverter gates, uh, to convert the vibrations of that crystal into a waveform that we use as our clock. So I think more likely than this IC chip spontaneously failing without any power applied, perhaps a jolt or a drop during shipment broke the, the little crystal inside this can. So let's replace this crystal with a new one and, and test our theory. So I've changed out the crystal and I've used a different package than the old one. If you re remember the old one kind of was in this larger package that was bent over and left to just flap against the circuit board there. This package sits flush against the circuit board and isn't going to move around as much when it's jolted. Uh, I also took out the two TTL chips here and tested them. They tested OK, so I put in sockets and I put the chips back in. So we're ready to test this out now. And sure enough... <laughs> Sure enough, we fixed the problem, so the crystal must have broken during shipment. Let's have a look and see if we can cut this old crystal open and have a look inside. So I've slipped the crystal out of the little metal can, steel can that it's in. And you can see there is the very thin sliced piece of quartz. Very thin circular crystal of quartz. And it's connected to the two leads. And you can see that the uh, crystal slice has come detached from one of the leads. So while it didn't shatter, um, it, it broke, broke free from its... Uh, electrical connection there. So only one side of the crystal was connected and it was not resonating like it should. But this is the inside of a crystal resonator. This reminds me of a previous video I did where we found a bad crystal oscillator in a Prophet 5. A crystal oscillator is a little bit different than this crystal resonator that we replaced because it has additional parts like the IC chips on board. But today we've seen that sometimes just a tiny bit of problem-solving skills is all it takes to bring a totally dead instrument back to life. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.